equipped with LED strips, an exhaust system, and a smart door detection sensor. The new Snapmaker 2.0 enclosure will offer features of illumination, fume emission, sound isolation, and laser filtration, giving you a brighter, quieter, and safer environment. In this video, we will introduce the assembly of Snapmaker 2.0 enclosure for A250 and A350 using A350 model as a demonstration. The whole assembly process can be divided into seven steps, including assemble the frame, attach back panel kits, connect and bury cables, connect enclosure to machine, attach side and front doors, attach side and top panels, and attach exhaust duct. You'll be finished in about one hour. Open the boxes in the packing and check if all the parts are in good condition by referring to the parts list in the Quick Start Guide. It's recommended to use the multi-bit screwdriver provided with the machine. H2.5 bit can be used on M4 screws, while H2.0 bit is for M3 screws. If the screwdriver is unavailable, you can use the two hex keys provided with the enclosure instead. Before beginning, you need to prepare the assembly tools and get the machine ready to be enclosed. When the filament has been inserted into the 3D printing module, follow the quick start guide of the machine to unload the filament first. You also need to detach the filament holder on your machine. Take the holder tube down from the holder sheet and fix it on the other side of the sheet. The reassembled filament holder will be used later. Power off the machine Disconnect the DC power cable and the touchscreen cable and keep the touchscreen for later use. Finally, detach the touchscreen holder and keep it properly. The frame is made up with 12 pieces of beams, which can be categorized into two types. Type 48CA and Type 24. Each beam has its name engraved on the surface. To make it easier to follow this video, we will leave out the beam word and the machine model when calling the beams. For example, 24 beam A351 will be 24 1, and 48 CA beam A251 will be 48 CA1. It's easy to tell the beams apart by their engraved names, as well as other features like LED strips, grooves, and magnets. Make sure you have picked up the right beams in each step, and during assembly, be careful with the sharp edges of the beams. Now, let's put up the bottom frame first. Find beam 48 CA2 that has grooves and a magnet on it, and find beam 24 1 that is mounted with two magnets. Fix them as instructed using two M4 times 28 shorthead screws. Make sure beam 48 CA is accurately mounted on the grooves of beam 24. Next, attach beam 48 CA4 to the other end of beam 24 1. Beam 48 CA4 has grooves too. To finish the bottom frame, fix beam 24 4. and attach the new touchscreen holder onto the right end of beam 24-1 using two M4 times 20 screws. Before moving on, check if the bottom frame is properly assembled by reviewing these highlighted parts. Now, pick beam 24-3 and three pieces of beam 24-2 as the upright posts. Beam 24-3 is mounted with a hall switch, and beams 24-2 have no special features. Use two M4 times 28 shorthead screws to fix beam 24-3 onto the corner right beside the touchscreen holder, with the sensor of the hall switch facing inwards and the cable outlet facing upwards. Attach beams 24-2 to the remaining three corners. Make sure not to tighten the screws when attaching all of the four upright posts. The next step is to assemble the top frame. Use two M4 times 28 shorthead screws to connect beam 24-1 and beam 48CA3. Notice the position of LED strip port on beam 48CA3 and the magnets on beam 24-1. Attach beam 48CA1 to the other end of beam 24-1. and attach beam 24-4 that is fitted with the enclosure converter. Also, pay attention to the directions of the text and ports of the converter. When the top frame is done, 
check if it is properly assembled. To continue, rotate the top frame and fix it onto the upright posts using 8 m 4 28 shorthead screws. Still, it's recommended not to fasten the screws now. And check the position and direction of the enclosure converter before moving on. Now, tighten all the 16 M4 x 28 short head screws that are loosely attached onto the upright posts. When the frame is done, check the highlighted parts again. Attach back panel kits. First, remove the stickers on the back panel. Adjust the direction of the back panel as instructed. Then put the larger snap-in bushing into the cable outlet on the panel. And put the labeled face of the exhaust fan against the left side of the back panel, with the fan cable outlet facing upwards. Then, hold the exhaust duct connector on the right side. Next, thread the exhaust duct connector, the back panel, and the exhaust fan with four M4 x 35 screws and fix them with four M4 wing nuts. When finished, fix the back panel kits to the back of the frame in the direction indicated. Attach 10 M4 x 12 round head screws halfway and tighten them all together. If the back of the frame hasn't been properly assembled into a square, you might have difficulty in aligning the screw holes on back panel with those of the frame. In such a case, try loosening some of the screws on the back of the frame to fine-tune the shape of it. And attach the back panel kits again. Connect and bury cables. Connect the door switch cable to either door switch port or the enclosure converter. Connect the LED strips to the enclosure converter using two LED strip cables. and connect the exhaust fan to the enclosure converter. When you're done, bury all the cables into the grooves of the beams and fix the cables with cable clips. Connect enclosure to machine. Move your machine to a proper place and enclose the machine with the enclosure frame from above. Clamp the foot fixtures onto the four feet of the machine. Then fix the fixtures onto the enclosure with four M4 times 20 screws. Next, connect the enclosure converter's expansion port and the add-on three port of the machine controller using the SMH expansion cable. Attach side and front doors. Remove the foams and stickers that protect the side folding door. Attach folding door sliders to the side door using four M3 times 10 screws and four M3 wing nuts. Make sure that the sliders are on the same side with the circular magnets. Now, put the two sliders into the slider grooves of the beams. Move the door horizontally to the right until it aligns with the frame. Then, fix the door with four M4 times 20 screws. Connect the touchscreen to the machine controller and place it on the touchscreen holder of the enclosure. To attach the front door, repeat the assembly. Put its sliders in and move it to the left until it aligns with the frame. Then, fix the door with four M4 times 20 screws, too. The next step is to complete the two remaining faces of the frame. First, remove the stickers and clip the smaller snap-in bushing into the side panel in the direction indicated. Fix the side panel on the left face of the frame. And make sure the notch of the panel is on the top left corner in your point of view. The notch will leave a space for the filament holder. 
To fix the panel, you'll be using M4 times 12 round head screws. Fix the filament holder onto the enclosure with two M4 times 20 screws. Then, finish the outer casing by fixing the top panel with 12 M4 times 12 round head screws for A350 enclosure or 10 for A250 enclosure. The final step is to fix the exhaust duct. Put the handle hose clamp around the exhaust duct. Then enclose the exhaust duct connector with both. Spin the handle to tighten the clamp. And lead the duct to the outside or other proper positions. Finally, thread the DC power cable through the snap-in bushing on the back of the enclosure and connect the machine controller to the power module. Now, the enclosure is ready to use. That's all for this video. For the use of LED strips, exhaust fan, door detection feature, and changing machine functions when it is enclosed, please continue to watch our video tutorial, How to Use SnapMaker 2.0 Enclosure. Thank you for watching.